uh, how to ask a research question. Uh, there are two ways. One is that you enter in a lab, your, your PA or your mentor, your mentor will assign you a problem. That's one way. Now, whether you like that problem or not, whether you are interested in that kind of problem or not, uh, if you do not have any suggestion to make to the mentor, then you end up agreeing to what mentor has suggested you, and then uh, you will do research with a half-hearted mind. You know, you will not be able to give 100% uh, to the work because your interest was asking a different kind of question. Though area is the same, the broad area is same, the specific area is the same, but then question which uh, need to be asked. If you know what questions you uh, want to ask in that specific area, you must discuss with the mentor, sit down with him. And, uh, and, uh, and if you have got your own fellowship and he's not supporting you financially for PhD, then there is all the more reason that you can argue with the mentor that, okay, uh, our uh, areas of mind area of interest and your area of interest matches but somehow these are my questions which i want to ask very specifically and i also have some knowledge about how to go about it okay so this kind of frank discussion should be there another way is that you don't have your own fellowship and you depend on a grant from the mentor in that case this this choice doesn't come because he's supporting you financially uh, for your fellowship then uh, you have to work uh, on the specific problem which the mentor has uh, got a grant for okay so i mean uh, if, if, if i mean i mean i mean um, if you have a choice uh, to 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 decide your own question uh, of uh, research and if you have your own fellowship then it is it is advisable that you sit with the mentor and i can tell you uh, uh, 9 out of 10 uh, will agree to, uh, we always encourage a student who has some idea, who wants to explore, you know, uh, and if we provide him the, uh, the, the infrastructure and the, and the consumable money, you know, and uh, we allow them to explore uh, a new area of research or questions, uh, which may, who knows, which may lead to a major grant proposal for the mentor, you know, in, in, in future in, in time to come. So uh, 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 we always encourage, uh, I mean, I can assure you my whole life has gone in this. So, and I have examples where I got students uh, wh whom I supported. I mean, the grant was not, um, not uh, they didn't work on my, my research proposal. They work on their own research proposal. I supported them and you, want, you can trust me that uh, subsequently, I had uh, a research grant based on the exploration done uh, by one of our, one of my PhD students. This is one specific example I'm giving. So, uh, uh, okay, coming back to the how you can ask questions. You know, you have to prepare yourself. I'm just giving you ideas. You know, so uh, if you have identified a broad area of research, uh, you know, you have to read. You have to accumulate knowledge. What knowledge is available? You know how. Uh, what kind of um, uh, literature is available uh, from the inception uh, or uh, from uh, when the people started looking at that particular uh, question? So you have to read a lot and know uh, what is going on from the beginning to current. What has been understood? what has not been understood what are the questions which today even today need answers you know so and that you uh, will know only when you make a dedicated efforts you can take three months four months five months uh, after joining or before you you know you get time after finishing your post graduation you have two three months time to utilize that time to <clears throat> to to uh, identify that which area you are interested in and uh, a broad area specific areas and try to develop specific questions why i am telling you this when you go for interviews 
they ask you these kind of questions, you know, to test whether you are really interested and whether you have al already made some efforts to gain knowledge in, a, in any area, you know, whatever if, if is the area of your interest, you know. So, <clears throat> so uh, once you have acquired knowledge and you know that uh, these are the questions which are, which, I mean, you may, you may definitely, um, uh, uh, you may, when you read and you can definitely find out gaps, where the gaps are, where the knowledge is lacking, where the information is lacking, and they become the questions for you to answer, you know, and fill those gaps, you know. So that's how you have to uh, prepare yourself uh, for asking a question, you know. So, uh, for example, I will I will give you an example, you know, uh, uh, to 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 illustrate what I'm trying to say. Okay, uh, uh, let us let us uh, uh, take a broad area of research to begin with. As I say, that you should identify a broad area of research, then a specific area, and then go to the specific questions. Okay. Uh, for example, the broad area of research is plant growth and development. Fine. Plant growth and development is the broad area of research. Okay. Where we try to understand that how plants grow and develop. You know. Now, <clears throat> there are so many um, uh, specific areas related to this. For example, there can be a physiological basis of growth and development. There can be biochemical basis of growth and development. There can be, uh, there can be molecular basis of growth and development, you know. So if we go one by one uh, to begin with, people try to uh, ask specific questions in all these specific areas uh, uh, from uh, uh, different in different time zone based on uh, based on the availability of uh, uh, information uh, and in availability of uh, our basic knowledge about cell biology you know and also the tools and techniques available you know the kind of tools and technique available today were not available in last century, in 40s, 50s, 60s of last century or 70s. The whole thing has undergone a lot of change, I mean, explosion of, uh, uh, of uh, information, knowledge, and uh, that is because of our, uh, I mean, the advancement in technology and the techniques. You know. So anyway, coming down to uh, the question which I am addressing to. So, physiological basis of uh, plant growth and development. Lot of work has been done and we uh, we know. Similarly, biochemical basis of development. Biochemical basis of development means hormonal basis of development. You know, all the hormones were discovered they, uh, of plant hormones or now we call them as plant growth regulators. Uh, they were discovered and uh, their role was identified what is responsible for root development, what is responsible for shoot development, etc., etc. And I gave you some uh, some uh, ideas in my previous uh, course, but, but I was dealing, uh, I think you all of you have done that course uh, on uh, plant biotechnology, for example. So a uh, lot of information is available. Now coming down to molecular basis of uh, development, for example, uh, molecular basis deals with uh, what are the genes responsible for the developmental process uh, or differentiation process. Now that is the question which is uh, which is not answered well in animals in plants till date. We have a very fragmented knowledge about the, uh, the the molecular basis of development and differentiation, and that's where today's biology rests upon. That much I can tell you. So we are trying to fish out genes and validate them for their function, particularly after genome sequences uh, are known. Genes, I mean, the putative genes are known, but we do not know their functions. So it's a very, very virgin area for anybody to uh, explore 
in animals, in plants, even in microbes, that uh, uh, what this genome contains. And if there are 1,000 genes in microbes or, or if there are 25,000 in humans, genes in humans, then what these genes are, what is their role, uh, what they do, you know, uh, uh, in the developmental process and uh, in, in, I mean, in, 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 in uh, differentiation and uh, keeping one healthy and what are the pathogenesis pathologies for different diseases one encounters and things like that. So, okay, coming back to the plant, the question I'm trying, I mean, the example I'm trying to I mean, give you here. So broad area of research is plant growth and development. There are three, four bases which have been explored and say molecular basis of uh, plant growth and development. So a uh, lot of information is known about floral developments, for example, in plants. What are the genes uh, are responsible for floral developments? What are the genes for shoot developments, the root developments? Root development is the most neglected uh, area, for example. So we know a little bit about root development. So if, if one tries to filter it down to, okay, what is known about, uh, uh, I mean, cataloging of genes, for example, for floral developments, the, the, the shoot development and the root development, and one will realize that where the, uh, the, the, the more scope of, you know, so for example, if you have identified, uh, say, what is the molecular basis of, say, root development? Okay, so you can ask a very specific question that what is, uh, what is the molecular basis of root development? But then before you answer this question, you have to uh, understand entire physiology of root development, the biochemistry of the root development, the cell behavior during root development, you know, uh, root organization of root, which is known. So you have to know all that so that you can be very specific in, in, in asking a question. For example, what I'm saying that if you look at a typical root in, of a plant, so you have a, a, a tap root or primary root, then you have secondary root, you have lateral roots, you know, uh, and then you have uh, different uh, I mean, you have plants under different growth conditions, the root uh, phenotype changes, like you have profuse rooting uh, under certain stress conditions. The, it's a defense mechanism on, on, on part of plants that they generate a lot of uh, uh, root uh, material, uh, the primary, secondary, later roots, you know, uh, and uh, and uh, 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 under normal conditions, the same plant shows a different root architecture. Now, so, I mean, if you, uh, if you have understood what is the physiological, physiological basis, biochemical basis, then you can ask now, what are the genes which are responsible for lateral root development, uh, 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 primary root development, secondary root development for profuse rooting or, uh, uh, and different time zones, you know, as the plant grows from germination to maturity, so, you know, it is the different set of genes which initiates the root development and the beginning as the seed starts germinating. Then they hand over to the other gene products, you know, which carry forward the development beyond uh, beyond a certain time period, and we call it as temporal regulation of root development. You know. So all this, if you know, then you can ask very specific questions that okay. What is, uh, if you are interested in, uh, in, uh, in defining that, okay, what are the genes which are responsible for uh, profuse rooting versus uh, less rooting? Or what are the genes responsible for uh, lateral root development, primary root development, uh, secondary root development? Okay, so you can be very precisely asked these kind of questions. Okay, then you should also know how to answer these questions. That is very important. You know, some idea. I'm not saying, you know, as a beginner, you may not have a whole lot of things known to you, but as you are going through this course of biotechnology, you are undergoing some basic courses, some advanced courses, some uh, technique based courses. So you can put everything together, you know, uh, at the end of this course. 
uh, and I'm talking about the time between you finish your MSc and uh, start uh, appearing uh, uh, for uh, uh, or uh, for interviews or uh, you take a decision to have a career in research. Okay, so for example, again in in, in the same uh, in a context. If you are, uh, uh, suppose, if you want to ask, uh, answer a question that what are the genes responsible for, uh, uh, for profuse looting versus uh, the less wood growth, then you have to, you have to uh, 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 generate uh, a broad database of all those genes which are expressing specifically in roots which are profusely growing versus the roots which are not so profusely growing okay so <clears throat> how to uh, go down to that that level it means you know there are techniques available where you can uh, you can deduct you know total uh, uh, gene pool over expressing at a given point of time uh, from profuse root, roots and and to the normal roots you just subtract and you will end up with the genes which are very specifically expressing in profuse rooting. Those gene products you can track as EST products. You can make EST libraries, you know, and then um, and then sequence them and annotate them, and you will end up with certain genes uh, uh, which are already known because some studies are available. Most of the uh, genes, particularly root, I can say that you may end up genes which have not been studied. They will just say that they are expressing in profuse roots as compared to the normal roots, you know. Uh, and then the question comes of validating. So that once you have a set of genes in hand, you have to validate them that yes, that is the function. How you validate these genes, you validate them, either you silence these genes or overexpress these genes in a transgenic scenario. Okay, when you silence it, it is if if the gene gene is involved in that developmental process, it is going to uh, hurt that developmental process. If it is responsible for profuse rooting, it is going to stop, you know, uh, profuse rooting. Uh, and if it is um, uh, if it is involved, uh, if you are overexpressing, then it is going to increase the uh, rooting more uh, profusely as compared to the non transgenic plants. This is just I'm trying to give you an idea that how one settled down from broad area of research to specific area asking specific questions. Now, this is this is an example I gave you can you can more or less uh, uh, apply this approach to any area for that matter. It can be cancer studies, it can be uh, corona studies, you know, you can apply this to any kind of um, uh, 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 thing, you know. So, uh, 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 so I think I will stop here, you know, 